Hi! A couple of months ago, I bought these three gaming watch units at the flea market and they were all working. One of them is actually Donkey Kong 3, one of the only models designed for two players at the same time. This summer, I let my brother borrow them and I only got them back recently and now this Italian gaming watch doesn't work anymore. When I turn it on, nothing happens. Also, the back panel felt a bit dumb while I was testing it, so I opened the battery slot and they were completely corroded. Let's have a closer look to see if I can actually get this working. I've tried to clean this area a little bit and it's much better than before. I have to clean it later, but for now let's just focus on these batteries. They're full of corrosion. Of course, I can't use this anymore. The multimeter says 0.04. And these batteries should be around 1.5 volts, so of course I uh, won't use them again. I also found this battery inside the box, I think the previous owner left it there. It's a bit corroded too, and it says 0.1, so I have to find new batteries. Inside the box there is a small manual that says that you have to use to LR43 batteries. So let's try inserting new batteries and see if it actually works. Okay, this is strange. I just inserted the batteries and it turns on, but this is definitely not working. Nothing happens when I press the buttons. So, there is definitely a problem and it's not related to the batteries. I'll have to open it to see what the problem might be. And as always, I want to remind you that my videos are based on my personal experience and should not be interpreted as tutorials. Certain repair procedures involve handling internal power supply components that might retain an electric charge. Do not attempt to replicate my actions without the guidance of an expert. I have only two screws back here that are holding the motherboard and the screen together and then hopefully I'll have a closer look with the microscope because I really want to see if the corrosion ruins some traces. Honestly, there's not much on this board so hopefully I'll figure out what the issue is without having to test a bunch of components. Well, as you can see, this area is really corroded. I've cleaned the other side, but this one is in rough shape. I'll need to remove this layer of corrosion. And I also think that these traces might be damaged. I'm wondering if this point is still making contact. Let's see, under here. Mm. But here, um, it actually looks fine. Everything looks good, so I'm guessing that the corrosion from the batteries ruined this part of the board. And now let's check the traces with the multimeter. If they actually make contact, the multimeter should make a sound like this. Let's see. I'm going to clean the board anyway before testing it, but just to be safe, let's check all the parts that looks corroded. So far so good, but I don't think this trace will actually make contact. It goes here, but nothing happens. You can see that this part of the trace is completely missing. Let's see if it makes contact here. Maybe I lose contact later. But no, nothing happens. So I'll definitely need to rebuild this trace, but before doing anything, let's give this board a good clean. I'm just going to be using a bit of contact cleaner over here and 
a cotton swab. I'll try to be gentle because I don't want to ruin these traces. Hmm. Well, you can see that there is a lot of corrosion over here, so I'll definitely have to clean it very well before testing it again. And I also have to scratch this area. It's really full of corrosion. I wonder if my brother dropped something on it, like soda. Because it's really strange that those batteries were so corroded. I'm trying to be careful, but as you can see, these trays fell off. Before doing anything else, I want to scrape off this part a little bit so I can connect these two parts. Let's see if I can do it without ruining anything. Okay, I just removed this other mask. Let's add a bit of flux. Yeah, maybe that's too much. A bit over here. I'm going to add a bit of solder before adding a copper wire. even a bit over here. Okay. It's really small. Let's see if I can manage to place it here. I've reconnected the trays and now, as you can see, it actually makes contact. I've also bent this copper wire a little bit because this whole part is missing and I'm not even sure it will make contact when someone pressed the button. I'll definitely add a bit of copper wire over here just to be sure that they will make contact and now let's see what happens when I turn it on. Mm. Okay, that's something. Definitely better than before. The audio is working. I can see the guard and the gates. I should also see a prisoner. And when I press this button, the prisoner moves. So that's Right, it's working now. Okay, that's not working. Definitely not working anymore. Sometimes it works, sometimes I just didn't see anything on the screen. At least the gaming watch turns on now, but there's still something wrong, so. Let's see what happens when I power on the Game & Watch. Well, I have three volts here. And then the trays goes here. Okay. Well, these trays goes here near this capacitor. And well, underneath there is also another capacitor a ceramic capacitor. Let's see. Hmm. I have zero volts. Yeah. Zero. And then the trays goes here. I also have zero here. 
I wonder if the trace is broken. Let's have a look at the microscope. Well, I really don't know how I've missed this while I was looking at the board before, but you can see that this part is moving. I'm not sure if you can see that, but this pin of the capacitor, I don't think it's connected. Maybe sometimes, sometimes it's connected, sometimes it's not connected, but it's definitely moving. So I think I'll replace the capacitor, but before doing anything, I'm going to remove this old solder and have a look at the traces underneath. I've replaced the capacitor, but before testing it, I also want to clean this area a bit more. You can see that where you should put the batteries, there's still a bit of corrosion. And also, these pads are very dirty and dusty. So, I want to clean everything with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, and then I'm going to test it. So I cleaned the inside of the case, which was honestly a bit dusty, and I also cleaned the buttons so they make proper contact. Then I used a bit of metal polish on the battery contact points, just to be sure they won't degrade in the future since it also helps prevent corrosion. After that, I applied some solder mask and cured it with some UV light. Once everything was ready, I closed it, and now it's ready to be tested. And now let's see what happens when I turn it on. Hopefully it will work. Seems to be working now. The audio works just fine. I can see the guard, the prisoner and the gates. So that's definitely working. My score is increasing when I cross the gates. So, so far so good. When I escape, I think five times another guard appears and it becomes more difficult. I'm not really good at this game. I always get caught. Oh, the result's another guard now. Three guards. So that's definitely working now. I need to play a bit more just to be sure that everything is working fine. I tested all the gaming watch units at the beginning and they all seemed to work except for the Italian one. But I couldn't really test Donkey Kong 2 properly because the battery's lock cap was missing. So I 3D printed one and since I didn't have brown filament, I printed it in a different color and then used brown spray after applying the primer. It's not the same kind of brown but better than nothing and now I can test it properly but when I turned it on I noticed that the audio works but nothing shows in the screen also the button display looks like someone tried to fix it before but not in the right way since there is this black area I think that the issue isn't hard to fix because most of the time you just need to replace the polarizing film on the screen you can see, for example, that, mm, yeah, like this, I can see much clearly now. So let's open it up, replace it, and take a look inside. So I opened the Game & Watch by removing all the screws, both on the bottom and the top. Then I cut the polarizing film at the angle that gave the best visibility and placed it on both the upper and the lower layers. 
As you can see, the screen looks much better now. The lower part of the display is a bit damaged, but there's not much I can do about that. I also fixed up the box. I opened it and cleaned it since it had a few stains and was a bit dusty. I also used some distilled water on the corners and used an iron to flatten them so the box wouldn't have crazes anymore. Then I tried to match the original brown color to touch up the faded areas and I reinforced one side that was especially worn by adding a layer of cardboard. And since everything is working fine, this video ends here. As always, I hope you liked this repair, even if it was easy. I still don't understand why that part of the capacitor was a bit lifted since the trace was in perfect condition, so let me know what you think in the comments, and also if you ever had a gaming watch, or if you ever tried to fix one. And see ya in the next video. Bye!